Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is May 3rd, SB Swing uh, midweek webinar. And I hope everyone's doing nice and, and wonderful today. Let me know that you can hear and see. I'd be doing better if it would stop raining. I am in uh, in the Midwest here in, in the United States, and it's been raining for like two weeks. Anyway, <clears throat> first chart we're going to look at, it's pretty clean, is, uh, is the gold chart. So, you know, after the... Um, The break and it, it was a breakout, right? We closed the week up above the, the trend line. But the biggest thing you got to understand, I think it's a new bull market in gold, uh, and that's based on the fact that you've that we've tagged the median line, right? That confirms kind of a uh, you know a new bullish slope, like a big, like a really big picture one, obviously. So what you should be doing is looking for, um, you know, levels that should provide support. Or I should say could provide support. But uh, one of those is coming up really soon, and it's the 1240s, right? Horizontal level, great. October low from 2016. It was resistance uh, on the way up in February, and it was support very recently on this base, okay? So four hour chart, you're going to have a confluence there of support, channel support, and um, this downward sloping resistance channel. So obviously with FOMC, uh, it's not supposed to be a big, huge mover today. But, you know, as, as we always say, um, the ones where no one really expects anything Right. The expectations are low for something to happen. So, you know, it really doesn't take a lot, you know, to move, uh, you know, the market, catch people off guard. So this 1240, you know, big area, I think, uh, for gold. So, you know, coming into a, an event like this, as you know, a lot of times you do get a capitulation type of move uh, into an event. And even if this is not the big next huge low I think it's a low so I would be looking for a bounce here had a question from Sharab who I see in the webinar how are you um, on Twitter just now and asked about mentioning about uh, July uh, looking for yeah rally basically into July and it's 1240 the level to go long well I mean if I were to say go long at 1240 and then come back in July um, you know I can't obviously predict the future but this is support so i i will you know i would be looking for support at 1240 right and in trading look for support by you know support some people buy into it some people wait for a reaction um you know to each their own but i will be i, I do expect a bounce here right now i think So the top was two weeks ago, right? It's 12.63. Here's 12.40s. So the top was two weeks ago, and you know one of the things that we do look for as far as median line, um, or you know it, median line stuff is concerned, is you look for a little bit of consolidation, you know, off of it, which has obviously happened because we we dropped already for two weeks. Um, you know, where were we? Twelve ninety-five, and so we've come off forty bucks, right? So it's a pretty decent pullback. Uh, and you know, I'd be looking for a bounce here, but you might need to have several more weeks of consolidation before you can get the big move higher. Uh, let's take a look too. I think it helps <clears throat> to get a view of the seasonals. For gold and silver, especially. So this I've got 
I imported data to get better gold data because the problem when you're doing futures, commodity, uh, any commodity, anything, you know, seasonal analysis over long, you know, long periods of, of data is you have the contango effect, right? Where you have a natural negative drift. Okay. So here is gold seasonals, right? Very bullish early in the year, does tend to peak out uh, in February according to the seasonals. Longer term stuff tends to peak out in May. That's the 30 year seasonal chart. And then the bigger low happens to be <clears throat> towards the end of end of June before it goes higher. So, you know, my analysis of price suggesting that we could maybe go sideways for a little bit, maybe doesn't jive 100 percent with the seasonals, but that's OK. Right. I mean, last year we went higher into obviously May and then higher into uh, July and August and topped out. But it's not like you're in a super duper bullish environment on a seasonal basis for gold right now anyway where you have to be you know super worried about missing out right a fomo type of situation uh, but watch that 1240 i think it's a big deal and maybe it tells us maybe maybe it will tell us a little something more um about this dollar situation which <clears throat> quite frankly is getting to be a little ridiculous uh if we look at you know, we look at some dollar index, DXY. I mean, you have, this is the weekly chart, so I'll go to the daily chart. I mean, the gap down through here, and then this consolidation, this to me is bearish behavior, right? You gap through a trend line, pretty big deal, a trend line that had been touched like nine times gap through it and then you can't close the gap and we're just doing this really really tight range to me i see this as downtrend sideways looking for downtrend which would be euro uptrend All right so if we do go back and attempt to fill the gap i still think there's a possibility that it doesn't get filled because the underside of this uh trend line okay is actually well below the gap it's more like the day uh, that 421 Friday, it's that day's low, actually. So, you know, it's not really the gap fill, which would be way up here, 99.98. So it's more like 99.65 is the area to watch. Hopefully we don't get there, because if we do, that means euro is going lower, uh, you know, down towards 108. <clears throat> Obviously not a lot to look at DXY because it's it's basically euro. Here is uh, the U.S. dollar index is quite is is quite a different animal right because this can have Auss <clears throat> aussie pound and, and yen and as we know the dollar has been really strong against yen um and then today against aussie so i'll get to aussie in a little bit uh, but with this you know kind of searching for that bearish slope if you will um you know i'm not sure if this is it right you don't it's not like you have really precise touches on the median line. That's okay because if we start to do it, you know, here or even up here and turn down, then you might have something to work with. But confidence not super high in this. Dollar sec, I think, is still a really good one to watch, right? And that's because you do have precise touches on this one. So, you know, I wrote, I think it was last week, one of the updates we talked about, um, Watching and following dollar set closely for, you know, behavior, uh, general dollar behavior. And so in this case, this was support, right? The 25 line, median line was then support. So if we do make it back up to this 25 line, I would expect it to provide resistance. And currently it's just around 8.9. All right. So again, that would be a pretty decent bounce from here. Um, doesn't have to get up there. To, it's already in a bearish, you know, position. So that's what I'm looking at with dollar sec. All right, now euro dollar. Now the next, this next uh, segment, if you will, is going to be called the all about segment. I basically have levels that it's kind of like, you know, it's 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 all about this one level. So euro dollar. 
it's all about 108.66, right? That was the 424. That was the Monday uh, after the first round of the French election. And that level, as long as it holds, it's the high volume level, it's really your pivot. So I would expect it, you know, it's provided support for four, four, the four days after the election, which is a good sign that, you know, it's constructive in my view. So again, the focus is still on 110 and 111, um, specifically 111.15. And, you know, I'm not going to go through it a ton here because I kind of did a whole video about it yesterday, which is in yesterday's post. But I mean, you can just see looking back at the median line that goes back to 2008. It's, you know, doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is kind of important. Right. So it, it looks like a magnet to me, like it, it needs to be hit. It needs to be tested. <clears throat> uh, and it's really the next major decision point, in my opinion. So we have FOMC coming out, obviously, later today. Um, again, the 108.66 is still the biggie. So I'm, I'm cool being, you know, long with stops below there. If we do crack it and we go lower, then you do have the median line at about 108.15 down here, which is level to watch. And again, a lot of good touches on there too, right? As far as support and resistance. And that would be the next level to really to really watch, okay? Or be aware of, all right? So Euro dollar really all about 108.66 and then 110 and 111.15 or so. Uh, cable, you know, the cable, well, I'm gonna, at the end, I'm going to look at some more cable crosses, um, like pound, pound Aussie, pound CAD, pound yen. But, the, you know, the pound, I mean, it's that pretty big resistance. And I, I still think that we get up, you know, towards this upper parallel, maybe even go through it a little bit because I've got the 130, you know, 135 is such a huge level. Um, but this is really big resistance. I mean, you do have a channel on the up, you know, uptrend channel, and this 25 line, the really long-term one. I mean, that's just a beautiful thing. Look at all the touches on it. At times, it was just super precise. I mean, starting back in December 2015, huge pivots, right? I mean, you went through it. It was a massive breakdown, resistance, 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 and we haven't quite hit it yet. And I'm, you know, kind of hoping for a gap fill at 29.75 uh, from the September gap. And if we get that, maybe, you know, get yourself a little capitulation on, uh, on FOMC, maybe, I don't know. Um, there's, uh, as we can see, you know, you get all kinds of Brexit headlines, you know, coming out at, at all hours of the day. So that's always obviously a consideration or, a, a you know, for cable, but yeah, I've got really big resistance up here and I'd be looking for it to pull back and, you know, maybe it trades within this channel for a while. Right. But it would be a good way to pull back. So, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm like super bearish cable, but I'm, I'm bearish here for a trade as long as we see the right action. Okay. I'd like to see it take out the gap, close the gap. And then if it, you know, comes off some, you got a good opportunity for a short, in my opinion. <clears throat> A shorter term chart for you. This is the one published um, yesterday, right? Last night. You can see this. This is the, the thing to watch for on FOMC. Say we are going up into this gap at some point or, you know, up into the longer term resistance, which would basically just be a, very, a slight new high. Um, you still have support here so coming into fomc you know down near 2860s you know if you get a lot of times the initial reaction as we know will be the wrong one if you do get an initial reaction down in 2860 it's worth a shot uh with a very tight stop okay dollar yen my goodness what a drifter So I 
there's a lot going on in this chart, but I'm going to take it to a cleaner chart, actually. Okay, dollar yen. So I thought after, after we took out the high at 12.19, we'd get a pullback. Hasn't really happened. I mean, I guess you dropped like 20 pips, but it doesn't really count. Um, this trend line is 113. Okay. That's really, you know, I, I'd say that's probably the last spot that I'd, I'd consider uh, or think that you would get a pullback from. You know, this is a, these markets are, when you go into this drift mode, right, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying because like you don't want to be, essentially you're, you're, you know, we're in a downtrend still in this channel. So you don't want to be buying up into resistance at the same time. It's tough to sell a market that's this quiet, right? Even though it's rallied a lot, it is quiet, right? So you know, as I, as I kind of wrote yesterday, these conditions, these drift or, you know, um, levitation type markets are the worst for me in my, in my style, because it, without much volatility, you have a very low chance of getting the, you know, the move to, to go quickly in your favor, because it's just going to stay there. Right. And there's nothing worse than that. You start thinking too much and it's, you know, uh, it's better to just not be in the trade, but yeah, 113 is the trend line. That's the biggie. Um, you know, if you spike through a little bit, then 13, I think is a 1326 or something is the 50% of the entire move down. <clears throat> 1337. So that's an area to know. I still think that there will be a good buying opportunity uh, later on. So for, for dollar yen, for me, it's again, all about 113. And eventually I think you can get back to 110. That would be your original trend line off the low from you know the April lows, and then your median line, which you know was a pretty good dividing line for resistance on the way down, broke through it. Would like to see it come back and test the four. That would be the ideal way to do this, as far as getting a uh, you know a base, if you will, to work higher from. And lo and behold, look at that. If we actually go up to 113 and pull in, the 618s 110 which is right on the confluence. So, um, you know, I certainly see a possibility of us trading in a 113 to 110 range over the next week or so. Because this would be, this would be about a week from now. And this, you know, goes hand in hand with getting a bounce in gold from 1240, okay? As well as, a um, pullback in the Nikkei, which, as we've documented, has been on its own run. You actually did have a pause yesterday. Uh, Nikkei futures. Now it's Gold Week in Japan, so you're not getting you're not going to get action really in during Tokyo. Um, but futures pulled back, you know, 150 points yesterday. Dollar yen didn't care really. Um, so this is daily reversal resistance. We've already hit it, trading just above it. Again, the next level is the high, which would also be the median line. So if maybe that needs to be taken out, I don't know. Either way, I think dollar yen 113 is a really big spot for a trade on the short side. Okay. And as I'm going through these uh, dollar crosses, keep in mind, you know, looking for kind of cable exhaustion up here as well as dollar yen exhaustion. So pound yen could be very interesting. And that's one of the crosses we'll look at in a second. But first, Aussie dollar. You know, you think you got it all figured out. Like I'm like, we're gonna get a five up. You know, I'll go to bed last night. Market was like right here. Like, okay, we'll get a five up, come in and I'll be looking to buy 74.90. You think you got it figured out and then copper, has its largest drop in like almost two years on one day. Copper's down three and a half percent today. Last time we were down that much, September 2015, we were down 3.7 percent. 
uh, one day. So yeah, again, <laughs> think you got to figure it out, and then Copper does this again. It's a, if you read the stories or you know the news, they're saying that uh, you know it's a Chinese story and stockpiles and and this and that. You know, look, Copper came into really beautiful support. And it's still it's still there. Obviously, this move is quite unexpected, right? But came to the support. We rallied, had a great rally, and I did. You know, I thought this was finally it, uh, and now we're back at support. So, you know, we could still hold. Um, <clears throat> we're saying, Karthik saying, explain more about copper possibilities. Sure. So here's the long-term chart of copper. This is a weekly chart. Okay, and you have your resistance, um, you know, from this parallel, which continue is still resistance, right? But we did have a behavior change last year because last fall, and we had this support line, the upper parallel here, ended up being support after you went through it one, two, three, four, five different weeks, as recently as two weeks ago. So when we were turning up, I was figuring this was probably, again, um, turning up for good considering that you had the old resistance providing support. Um, but as far as possibilities are concerned, if you break down here, if we get back, if we get back below the support, I don't, you know, I don't see any way that you can be bullish copper. Okay. Um, I just don't, you know, I just don't see it at that point. I'd be looking, I mean, the horizontal levels, two thirty, two thirty five. But at that point, it'd probably be back down towards the lower channel, which would be 220. Okay. So I like copper as long as you're above the low from 419. Below there, forget it. Okay, so then that takes us to Aussie. Um, you know, this wave count is not really valid because you didn't make five up. Anymore. I guess you could call this a truncation, but that's quite, well, I guess that would be okay. On an hourly close, it was actually fairly close to the high. But you're already down at, you know, an hourly close basis. You're basically on the lows already. So um, four hour chart then. You know, I would look at 74.90 as resistance at this point. Okay. Low from uh, March 9th. Low from uh, April 19th. 74.90. So again, obviously not what they say, not my base case as far as what's happened here today with the, with Aussie. Uh, definitely did not see that coming, right? The way it turned up with all the divergence at the lows, retracing half of the rally from <clears throat> from December, um, you know, it looked really solid and ready to go finally. But no dice. Sandy saying 74.90 to buy for Aussie. No, not at this point. You're, we, we, well, the idea was that if we get five waves up and then pull back, you'd get 74.90 support. Um, but no, the mark, this, this, unless Aussie, there's no structure to this thing. It's just, you know, at this point, it's 73.85 is the next level. Okay. Remember, we are thinking this is a triangle. So this is big wave A, small wave A, B, C, D, E. So I am looking for this to find a low at some point. All right, if it's not going to be here, if that if this is not it, 
then your next logical place to look is again 7367, 7382. Remember 7380s, right? That's the October and December 2015 high. 618 from December is there, but more importantly, 7367 is the 618 of wave C. And in you know in triangles, you get a lot of times you get alternating legs to relate by 618. Right, so that's what we're uh, that's that's the base case. You know, the oh, I guess always a chance that you could get even down to 73, right? I mean, that's just the trend line, but um, the big level to me because it, it clusters so many things here 7367, 7380s. Yeah, the implication though after this is that A, A, B, C, D, E, and then the next move is the big C wave, which is the trending move. And we're, I'd say we're due for a trending move. Um, that would it'd be higher. All right. Yeah, Sandy, I will take a look at. Um, Actually, we're going to look at both those charts. I'll look at both those charts here in a sec. Okay, what about Kiwi? So Kiwi had its employment number yesterday, which was really good. But it's sold off ever since the number. And it did come into decent resistance, 60, 50, 70. I was looking for a high volume level uh, on the capitulation. Didn't get it. You can see that was yesterday's um, this bar right here that was the employment number right and we didn't get the high volume level. the high volume level is actually still right here which is 6950 so from here considering that we have you know responded to resistance if you actually look at a short-term chart like a 15-minute chart you can count five down so I'd be looking to fade a rally on FOMC if you can get a move back up to 69.35 69.50 it's a sell tight stop up above the high from last night which is uh, 69.68 okay so I like that and daily basis support 6790 and eventually the big spot is probably 66 uh 6690 so 6790 then 6690 again 6689 and 618 of the rally from 2015 it's also the 52 week closing low so good spot there and then the, the median line right <clears throat> okay and then dollar cad and then we'll go into the crosses so dollar cad just the chart from last night uh, is, is, you know, the one to watch in my opinion. And that is the channel right here. Okay. You can see that basically comes right in around 36 in the 36 thirties on FOMC, that short term channel. Oh, here's the chart. This is the chart from last night. Sorry. So this is chart from last night, cause it's also got the long term parallels on it. Um, and you have an intersection of all that stuff, short term parallel, long term parallel, intermediate term parallel right all that stuff because this is the channel off the low for may this is the trend line back to the 70s the red ones and then this is the uh, really short term channel okay and it all intersects with the fib later this week so if you could get a dip on fomc into the 36 you know 20s 30s or whatever uh it actually to me it would be uh something to consider buying for the final run. And really the uh, dollar CAD and uh, and Kiwi charts are kind of similar in that they both, if you, be, if you get a dollar negative reaction on both of them, it suggests that you buy the dollar, right? So Kiwi, it, it suggests sell Kiwi if you get a bounce. Um, 
60, you know, 69, 35, 50, and it suggests buy dollar cat if you get uh, a dip on the dollar on FOMC. So good looking charts there. Euro uh, Aussie, so that was one we wanted to look at, and actually Sandy just asked about it. So Euro Aussie, you got it. Let's take a look here. So the 147 spot's huge. This is a chart from one of last week's posts, but you can see that the high from December. Um, December, uh, yeah, last December, 20, 2016. And then you've got the parallel there too, which was resistance uh, last September. So, you know, that area is basically 140, it's, you know, 147.16 is the horizontal high. So that's a big area for me, uh, would be expecting to see some sort of a reaction there. You've also got, so here's the short-term fork now. And you can see what happened here. Recent low is actually on the median line. This would actually be a little higher. 47.80 is actually where that would be today. And obviously increases each day. All right. So the 47 to 47.80 spot would be looking for some sort of a pause um, in that move higher. Euro CAD is actually pressing into. I don't know if this is necessarily a valid fork or not, but it's pressing into it. And EuroCAD is also, if I go to the monthly chart, EuroCAD has now retraced half, a little more than half actually, of the decline from uh, January 2016, so last January. All right. Um, the bigger spot on this chart is probably 52.50, uh, which is the weekly reversal close here, as well as the really long-term median line. If you get, you know, we've broken the trend line too, so. EuroCAD, it's been on obviously quite a run, um, but if you do get pullback consolidation, what have you, uh, you probably are going to see support on the on the top side of this broken trend line, which is going to be down. I mean, currently it's you know below 148. So if we get, if you get a pullback in, in EuroCAD, it's a buy down here. Okay, the pound crosses. The pound crosses are interesting. Before I go to that. Uh, Karthik is asking about, she said, can I repeat uh, Kiwi? Yes, of course, I can repeat Kiwi. So just real quickly, Kiwi. So this was the channel, okay, that we've been looking at um, on, you know, a medium-term basis back a couple of years. Long-term basis, you've got a really long-term fork with the median line, which actually comes into play at the 618 of the entire rally from the 2015 low. That level is 66.89 so kind of all about that level right 66.89 we found resistance um just after you know the kiwi number last night so the reaction here so far is bearish it's what you want to see at this point looking you know if you're looking for you know bearish into this level which uh, i do like the short side in kiwi right here so the way to play it is if you get a bounce on fomc um or actually it doesn't have to be an fomc if you get a bounce at all right if you get a bounce, 69, 35, 69.50 is where I would want to be short. Okay, stops above the high from last night, so it's a it's a really tight stop and a good reward to risks. Let's just say you get 69.35, um, basically yesterday's high, 69.40. Let's say you get 69.35 and you put a stop at 69.75. Right, 40 pip stop. Your first target is down here is 67.90. Okay, so you know 69.35. You know you're talking about 145 pips on compared to 40 pips of risk. Okay, uh, good reward to risk on, on that on that idea. 
All right. Let's go back to the crosses. Sarab so asking silver if we have time. Yes, we will take a look at silver, which has obviously been absolutely uh, murdered lately, right? Down 12%. Uh, as the record long position gets cleared out. Okay, so pound CAD. Um, Closed the Brexit gap today, actually yesterday, 77.68. So good spot for a pullback. I'm not sure, you know, the, as far as slope is concerned, you know, this might be the thing to follow. Um, doesn't have great, you know, the only thing on this is that's interesting is the fact that it's, you, you, you do have the gap here in the first of the year. So, you know, with the gap, again, from Brexit right here, I would be expecting some consolidation or pullback um, and we'll be, you know, aware of or looking at potential for resistance or support in the coming days if it does pull back. Something that I thought was interesting. So RSI on the daily chart actually reached 82 the other day. And I wanted to see RSI on a daily chart when it reaches that level, 82, it's actually 82.25. Actually, it's never happened. Um, yeah, I thought it had, but it hadn't. It's pretty crazy, huh? So like the prior record even, let's see. Let's even, let's go like 70, even 78. Let's even go 78. Okay, so even 78, that's been reached a couple times. And you see that you did get some decent pullbacks, right, before going higher. Um, you know, here you would have gone from about 175.50, 172.50, 300 pips or so. So this extreme, extreme momentum on the upside, Right? I like to show things like this because people say like the you know, RSI is here should be like really bearish. Not really. I mean, maybe for like a really short term trade. But typically when you get really extreme, um, you know, extreme moves like this, you know, it, or extreme RSI is like this, that extreme momentum, oftentimes the pullback is bought. And that's that can be true on any time frame, by the way. So we'll track that, but you are at a level where if, if it's going to pull back, it's probably now. Uh, and, and again, the pound dollar, we're you know kind of looking for exhaustion up in that gap level of its own at 29.65. I think it's it's interesting to see cable, some of these cable charts, these other cross crosses, other cable crosses at such big levels, right? So the, the Brexit gap and pound CAD, very interesting um, and kind of an agreement, if you will, with the idea that cable itself could pull back, pound dollar could pull back some. <clears throat> okay, pound yen. So this is an interesting, interesting chart. So here's a long-term slope, right? This would actually be the center or median line of that. And you are pretty much on it today, aren't we? Just about. 145.50. We're pretty close to confirming a new um, bullish long-term slope in pound yen, which is very exciting um, because the thing about these media is that you, we can get the turn, the large turns, you know, or confirmation of them relatively early. And, you know, we can kind of have competent confidence in where we should see pullbacks and everything else. And in this case, the pullback uh, for pound yen probably comes. We've already taken out 
the 127 high. So we do have, I believe, a new high for the year. No, we don't. The first, the high for the year is actually the first day of the year so far, which is right here at 145.39. And we'll print today four pips from it. So we're really close to confirming. I'd like to see it push a little higher. You know, if you get, again, if we get that dollar yen up to 113, um, then you might actually get this 146.50, right? Yeah. And that would be the new median line. I have it grayed out right now because it's not yet confirmed. But that would be the new median line. And then you'd be looking for a pause, right? And a pullback. So yeah, I'm looking for uh, again a pullback in pound yen, but it might not be until about 146.50. Uh, 146.77 is actually daily reversal resistance from 12.15. Okay, and then pound Aussie, which I know Sandy was involved in or had asked about. So you're long, nice, nice, uh, nice job there. Pound Aussie. Sorry, wrong chart. Pound Aussie. Okay. So it's a, I have us at a really big level actually uh, for Pound Aussie. You can see this is basically your former channel, um, former channel support, I should say. So did pull back on that first that first attempt uh, pound Aussie did but here we are right back pressing into these highs um, you know my you're also at the at the upper channel line it's also at the median line all right so there's a lot going on here so pound Aussie uh, it's a really good looking chart, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is big resistance. I, you know, I guess the wild card in this is this copper move, which to me is straight out of freaking left field. Um, you know, the 7385 is in Aussie, right? If you get down, if you get all the way down there and pound kind of holds its own, then you're probably going to, obviously you're going to see a bigger push higher in this. But let's see where the next levels are. But yeah, if you're involved in this now, you know, I would just kind of tighten up the risk to like today's low. Um, Cause this essentially is a breakout on a closing basis and you're at the median line here. So you're gonna, you probably have, you know, you're gonna see powerful action as you often do around median lines. Um, and if you come off, it could be a fairly sharp drop and you get back down into this area. 25 line, which was resistance, maybe a little above it. I have to put a parallel above these, uh, and that would be support. But breaks above the median line can be extremely, extremely powerful too. Okay. Uh, and my focus on the next move higher would be about 179. Okay. Which again is the 75 line. And that's the reason we would look for that is because on the 25 line, we, are, we had we had uh, we had resistance, so that was an influential, you know, that was influential, I should say, right? It was an influential um, level to find resistance on these, on these, on these levels. And so, when you have the 25 line that's acting well or doing something, you look for it to go to the 75 line once you break the median line, which again would be 179. All right. So, I don't know if this is a story of if that happens or not. Obviously. Would think it'd be driven more by Aussie. I don't think you're going to get up to the 179 anytime soon because I actually am looking for cable to again pull back from here. <clears throat> if that happens, it'd be a complete Aussie meltdown, wouldn't it? Um, you know, if we look at other crosses like you know Aussie CAD, for example, you know the week's not done, obviously, but here's a weekly chart. And if you get another candle like this up here, I mean, it's just super long-term resistance. Uh, you know, it just can't break through. Um, you know, there's Aussie CAD, right? Aussie 
high up here in 2014. I mean, every time we get up here, it's it's you know it just gets slammed, right? So it might be something where you know just keep your keep your some of your long pound Aussie with a stop under today's low, and you could even kind of be short. You know, if you want to take out some of the pound exposure, you could try to be short some pound CAD because it, that'd be probably be more of a play on CAD. But then you'd end up short Aussie CAD with your pound exposure kind of uh, you know kind of wiped out. All right, so silver. Sarab was asking about silver. Let's take a look at silver. So silver has been hosed. Six one eight. Silver's at the six one eight. Hit it yesterday and got a nice rebound and right back at it again. Um, yeah, I mean, looking for a bounce. You know, looking for a bounce. I will say that this is not the most um, it's not the most constructive action in the world. <laughs> you know, it, seeing silver drop like this. You know, and the scary part about it is the fact that you had record long positions in silver when silver was here. It's not like it was in some big rally. Silver, you know, everyone's position in this thing. So I don't, you know, I, this is nice support here for silver. I would expect to see a bounce, but again, 1707 now, which is a level that we wanted to see hold a support. It's a big level. That's now a level to watch for resistance. Okay. So expecting a bounce here, just like I'm expecting a bounce in gold from 1240. Um, You know, but if silver bounces here, then pay attention to to 1707 because that could be resistance now. You know, there is a wave count possibility here, and that this is one, and this is A, B, C, and it's a big flat. Uh, in order for me to believe that, I'd probably have to see something like a major reversal with some significant volume to it, uh, which we haven't seen yet. Right, the volume on this decline's actually been really low. You can see it's been dropping the whole time. Um, you know, so what you'd want to see is you'd want to see a big washout and then basing back above it. Like the low back in uh, December is a great example. Like you have this huge washout, big volume day, the red bar. It then bases around it and then establishes back up the close of that volume day. Okay. You know, that's a great setup to look for. And just for, while I'm on the volume charts, might as well. Here's the euro, right? Euro futures, volume breakout, basing on the volume level so you know exactly where your risk is, right? It's right under here. As long as you're holding that, good things can happen to the euro. Okay, I want to take a look real quickly at, um, I thought it was kind of cool, the the uh, little index, like the European against commodity index thing. I thought that was fun. So, yes, divided by Aussie dollar plus... CAD dollar plus Kiwi dollar divided by three, right? Yes, okay. So, I thought I had these charts marked up, I guess not. Anyway. Um, crap. I have to 
type this whole thing in again. Okay, so yeah, I thought this was kind of cool, uh, showing the and you're basically Europe against commodity index, right? So we're coming into a pretty big level for this. Um, again, it's the pound CAD's already done it, but it's the 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 Brexit gap, right? So you're essentially back to where you work, Europe against commodities, uh, currency wise. You know, since Brexit, and you know, you're coming into some pretty big resistance too from a trend line. Uh, so we might start to see. I was thinking heading into this, you know, that we could end up seeing a. Uh, you know, some sort of a, a behavior change start relatively soon. Uh, obviously, you have to pick your poison here because there's a lot of different currencies that you're looking at. Um, you know, you're looking at pound and euro against CAD, Kiwi, and, and Aussie. So, you know, this isn't something where it's like, well, I'm going to be all bearish commodity currencies and all bullish European currencies or vice versa, right? You want to be, you want to be, uh, you know, pick, pick your spots. So, you know, for me, if I'm looking at this, knowing that dollar CAD is coming to this huge level, it gives me an interesting, you know, kind of thought to think, well, maybe uh, it does something, but you need to hold this trend line. And you also got 170, uh, the 170.30 area or so, which is the median line up here. So I'll continue to do some work with this and uh, the other indexes and see if we can glean any more insight. But like, so this is, if I, if you can also make a Euro, we can also make a Euro one out of it, right? So we could just compare Euro. To. Euro compare, we could just compare Euro to them. Yeah, there you go. So we can compare Euro to the three, and if I go to like a daily chart, right? And you can see if I compare Euro to the index, you get a sense of, you know, what is like driving the market. Right. So like, is it pure Euro strength? Like, so for example, during this period up here, 2015, this was not really Euro strength. This was more commodity weakness. Right now, this is, is really is Euro strength. And I kind of like that if I'm bullish Euro, right? Because the index itself is breaking out. It's broken through a really good level. And euro euro price is following it like you had a big non-confirmation actually in February because you had a new low in the index, but not a new low in, in the euro dollar exchange rate. And they're confirming each other on these highs. So this to me is, you know, kind of an interesting way to look at it. Um, you know, maybe gives you a different look. You know, so if we start to see, you know, if we start to see, you know, euro continue higher, but this rolls over, it to me would be kind of a warning sign. And we've seen that before, obviously, some of the really big tops, like look what happened in 2014, um, you know, before the big top in euro and the big drop, right? You actually had in January that year, euro is starting down, just not against the dollar yet. Finally, you know, so when you were making new highs in the euro at that point, it was like, this is kind of BS. And sure enough, you know, it rolled over. So, you know, it's looking at it against other currencies, not just, um, you know, not just the euro. 
against the dollar. Cool. All right, so we got FOMC in an hour. Um, I mean, nothing, you know, especially new here to add that hasn't really been talked about. Um, the big levels to pay attention to, folks, they're out. They're outlined in the in the update last night, but just real quickly, so you have them right in front of you, fresh. You know, euro kind of have, like like it higher, right? If we do crack, then 108.15 is probably your next level, right? Pound dollar, pound dollar. 128.60s uh, and then 129.75, which is the gap from September. Those are the areas to pay attention to. Okay. Dollar again, 113. That's the channel. Looking for exhaustion into 113. <clears throat> Aussie dollar, uh, it's just, I'm quite confused by it at the moment, so I uh, don't really want to get talking about something that is just confusing me too much, but basically 74.90, if you bounce, is probably going to be resistance at this point, given that that was lows back in March as well as April. Um, Kiwi is a good short if you get a bounce up into 69.35, 69.50, and here's, again, that chart, right? Good resistance, intraday, five down. If you get a bounce, Look for resistance up here, 69.35, 69.50. 50 is the high volume level still. Dollar CAD, really nice looking channel. If we dip into it, you know, you got your support down around 36, 35 or so at this point on this blue line. And ultimately the really big levels up here, and that's 138.38, okay? And those are the big things that I will be paying attention to. Um, see if we get the market to kind of clean itself up and enter a new phase after FOMC as, as is often the case. And then we can probably get some good entries into the market for the next couple of days. All right. Oh, and 1240 gold, huge, huge. 1240 is huge. Okay, Kelly. Awesome. Thank you uh, very much for the nice comment. And thanks everybody for attending. I'll get this archived and up, but in the meantime, go get yourself a fresh glass of water uh, some crackers, some cheese, maybe, I don't know, and get ready for FOMC. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.